What is up, yo? This is Gift speaking. Welcome to it. You are on the gift of faith. The gift of faith right now. It's been a long way coming, as you can tell. I'm pretty stoked to join the YouTube community. And today, for our very first video, we're going to be talking about masking. If you're working alone, Wear a mask. So we're gonna explore the pen tool and discuss five creative ways you could use masking within After Effects. So let's get into it. One of the most popular ways in After Effects to use masking is when you need a sky replacement. Maybe you shot footage in a location and you didn't kind of like the weather, or maybe you just want to change the sky for, you know, artistic purposes. For those of you who don't know, sky replacement is exactly what it sounds like, which is the process of removing a sky in a footage to replace it with a more dramatic one because you're trying to draw up the narrative of a story or something like that. So it's mostly used in the visual effects industry. You're a smart motherfucker, that's right. Now for this process, all you have to do is open up your footage in After Effects, create a new comp with it, and then mask out the parts of the, parts of the video that you're going to put your new sky in, and then find your new footage that has the sky that you want to include in the video, drop it under the footage that you've just masked out, and then try and position it and get it to a spot where you kind of feel comfortable with having it. Now all you have to do at this point is make your sky a little bit more interesting to watch or a little bit more interesting than the original one that was on the video. So with that you can just add some color adjustments, maybe tweak a few colors here and there until you get it to a place where you feel satisfied with it. I always add some anamorphic bars just to make the whole thing kind of live together and voila that's it. So sky replacement is one of the most popular techniques with masking because it's kind of one of the most used one in visual effects also um, because of various reasons. Now for our second project, which is the text reveal technique. So what this is basically is using some kind of element in the video to kind of reveal text that you want to include in that video as a title. So the way you go about this is that you drop your footage in After Effects once again and then you're going to look at your video and see what object in the video you can use to do your text review. So in my case it's this car with some balloons on it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move forward in time and see the perfect spot where I can start doing my text reveal. Once I do have it, I'm just going to tap out my text, choose a font that I'm comfortable with, and then I'm going to put it at the center of my composition. And then what I'm going to do at this point is that I'm going to draw a mask around my text, and then I'm going to move backwards in time on my timeline, and then I'm going to start drawing the mask according to the shape of my object. So I'm going to do this for a couple of frames until my text is fully visible at the end of my duration. And then once that is done, I'm going to move backwards in time again to see how the whole thing plays out. So when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to add a couple of more things just to make the whole thing more interesting to watch. Now, I just want to bring this up. Like halfway through masking on my timeline, I realized that there has to be a better way to do this. I read an article some time ago about Adobe launching a face track feature within After Effects. So what I did this time is that instead of masking the text, I drew a mask around the object that I want to do the text reveal. And if in After Effects you go up to animation and then track mask, After Effects will gladly do all the work for you. So all you have to do at this point is chill. So I am a little bit upset that I sort of didn't realize this sooner. Otherwise I would have done this with the first project. But anyway, it's fine. So I did it so that you guys don't have to. Yeah, and remember, you don't always have to limit this technique to just text reveal. Sometimes you can just have like text in your footage and just have the foreground objects interacting with it. I've seen this technique used a lot in trailers, movie trailers, series, all of that stuff. And it kind of looks okay, even when you're not using a text reveal for it. Okay, who's next? Moving on to our third technique, which is removing items from your video. Now this feature has always been there in Photoshop, but not so much in After Effects. So how this works is that you would drop your footage in After Effects and then draw a mask around the item that you want to remove from your video. Remember, it also depends on how big the item is on your footage and it also depends on how big the space is around your footage. Like for example, if you have a house that you want to, you want to remove like from your footage, you need to have a lot of space in your footage to kind of let After Effects compensate for that area that you want to remove. 
so in my case i have a boat in my scene that i want to get rid of so let's say for example we're shooting a movie like a shark movie and you know this shark is supposed to come out of water and then bite the main star on the hand and then he's supposed to shoot it in the mouth of the flag or something but you know we have like a, a crew boat in the background So anyway, long story short, what I'm gonna do to get rid of that boat, um, I'm gonna drop my footage in After Effects, then I'm gonna go to the beginning of my timeline, then I'm gonna draw a mask around that uh, item that I want to so that I want to remove in my case, which is a boat. As soon as I've drawn my mask, just like in the previous projects, I'm gonna go throughout my timeline and make sure that at every frame, um, the mask is covering that object that I want to get rid of and make sure that the keyframes are being set up because that will help After Effects kind of recognize which area you want to get rid of in your video. As soon as you're done masking that item throughout your timeline, all you have to do is go up to window, click on content that we fill, and then the window should pop up on your UI. And all you have to do then is just click on generate fill layer. That will pop up a new window asking you to save it somewhere on your hard drive. As soon as you've done that, After Effects will do all the work for you. And all you have to do at this point it's chill. All right, everyone. Chill. Like for real, like hang out. And then that's it. Moving on to our fourth and my favorite technique, matte painting. I love matte painting. I love it. Love it. Love it. So for those of you who don't know, matte painting is the process of using different visuals to create one cohesive visual. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drop my footage in After Effects that I want to perform my matte painting on, and then I'm gonna mask out areas of that footage that I don't want. So I'm only gonna keep parts of the video that I only need to include in the final uh, visual, if that makes sense. I should have like enough free space in my composition to put whatever crap I wanna put on there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drop a visual of buildings and then I'm gonna mask it and keep only parts of that image that I want to include in my final visual. So I'm gonna duplicate it a couple of times before introducing a new element, which is the sky. And then I'm gonna color tweak it to match my scene as best as possible. And then I'm gonna add a lens flare to bring the warmer tones together. Then a bit of color grading and my scene should be sorted. And last but not least, coming to our fifth and final technique, which is this pop-out effect thingy from video, whatever. Well, I've seen this done multiple times on social media, especially Instagram. It's really cool when done correctly and gives the illusion that something is coming out of your screen. So again, all you have to do is drop your footage in After Effects. The first thing you need to consider before doing anything else at this point is to make some anamorphic bars so that your footage will have something to pop out of. So for that, you'll just have to create a solid, a black solid, so bring up the grid to make sure your top and bottom bars are evenly spaced. And then you're gonna duplicate your footage and put it over the anamorphic bars. And then at this point, you're gonna start the awesome process of masking. So depending on how long your scene is and how long your footage is, you're gonna have to mask out every part of the video where you want the subject to go over the anamorphic bars. And once you're done, all you have to do is go back in your timeline and play back the video and make sure to clean up every part of the video where the subject is not lining up with your masks. So this will avoid any jumping of the mask in your final footage. And that's it. Five creative ways to use the masking technique in After Effects. <laughs> And like I said, this is the very first video on this YouTube channel. So if you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button because there's obviously more content on the way. Leave a like if you have a second and together we'll embark on this journey. I'm going on an adventure! Where we find new and creative ways of doing things and in the process kind of groom ourselves into becoming even better industry professionals and even better content creators. I'm super excited about this adventure. I hope you are as well. And with all of that said, and this is the best part, I'll see you in the next video.